So I have a bit of a confession to make. I've got to level with everybody here right now. I'm a hoarder. I know, very brave of me. Very brave of me to come come forward and say this. Yes, I know, thank you. Hello, Kumo. Yes? Kumo. But I'm also not talking traditional hoarding, either. I don't mean things, I don't mean objects, I don't mean garbage. I mean data. Data hoarding has become something of a phenomenon here recently, or something that I've noticed as a phenomenon occurring across the internet. The term was officially coined in, I think, 2015 by an individual by the name of Van Binnicum. No relation. Admittedly, it almost definitely existed online well before that. I'm saying probably at least 10 years before that. It, it would have been appearing on like 4chan or independent blogs or things of that nature. But data hoarding is the act of just not deleting things. And I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, Van, that doesn't sound like it's a particularly big deal. It's data. I mean, how much does it really matter? Well, that's one of the primary arguments for it. And as a matter of fact, there's a lot of arguments for it, but there's more reasons for it than just good ones. Just like with any other type of hoarding, it comes in a multitude of varieties. There's a lot of different ways you may be a data hoarder or somebody you love. First, close your tabs out. You know that person. You know that individual with 250 tabs open in their phone at any given time because they're so scared of losing their place and where they were that they can't get rid of it. That's hoarding. Same with your emails. Just delete them, man. Like, you're... There's no reason for you to have 12,000 unread emails, I say to myself right now. Another one is, uh, followers. Like, subscriber count or something of that nature can sort of fulfill that same space that traditional hoarding usually would. Speaking of, subscribe. Add to my hoard. I am a dragon. I am the YouTube dragon. But then come the two that I'm probably the most personally guilty of. The first being old hardware. And what I mean is that Razer from 2008 that you had in middle school that you just haven't gotten rid of for some reason, it's in your nightstand drawer right now. You know where it is. You go back to it occasionally. Throw it away. You don't need what's in that phone. You may think you do. You may want it. You may, you may feel a little, you know, pain from parting with it, but you'll be okay. I do promise you that. You don't need to see the text messages you were making when you were in 8th grade. Just trust me on this one. But also, there's file hoarding. This is the one that I'm the most guilty of. I currently have about 2 terabytes worth of just stuff. I mean like audiobooks, regular books, movie, anything that I can think of that I felt like conserving or downloading or having. Why though? Why any of these things? Why any of these particular things? Well, we've talked about a little bit of it. The anxiety of getting rid of things is always going to be a big one with hoarding. But let's really dive into this. I've got five reasons. Normally I do threes, but I just kept thinking of them. I really like this. I really like the concept of data hoarding, and I know that's probably unhealthy for some people, but I'm currently not one of those people. It's fun right now. It's interesting and it's engaging. The first reason is always going to be your typical hoarder things. Anxiety, depression, general laziness, an overwhelming amount of things that you just can't sift through or don't feel the attention or the ability to do so. All of these things contribute to digital hoarding, just the same as they contribute to regular hoarding. This is where it is the most obviously unhealthy, because it is based in an unhealthy place. Even things based in a healthy place can be unhealthy sometimes. But in this case, it's immediately in that unhealthy spot, and it only gets more unhealthy as you begin to grow your hoard. And even more so in modern times, because as we grow as a society, more and more of our lives, of our time, of our day, is online, or it's in a digital space of some kind. And parting with that, and losing that little part of yourself, is more than some people can do. But of course, there are more reasons than this. And from here on, I... They may lead to negativity, but I truly feel like, for the most part, it's a positive thing. Because number two is conservation. Conservation of information specifically. There's been something of a trend within the last few years that we've seen with media companies in deleting completed projects and no longer allowing them to be available to anyone for any reason unless you have it as a physical DVD or physical thing. This used to happen all the time. This would happen non-stop back in the day, and we never really thought about it, because who fucking cares if they get rid of Bingo's 
Boingo Adventure number seven. Who who cares if 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 Curtis went to sleep under a palm tree today? Like I don't I don't think anyone is missing most of the shovelware that was thrown out. The thing is, is companies don't move as fast as the internet or fast as fast as the average person does. Companies are a lot of people. They move slowly because of the legal system, and so their mentality stays slow. They can't do this with people anymore. Because there's always somebody who it is their favorite thing. And people hate to lose their favorite thing. They will do a lot not to lose their favorite thing. There, there, there's sort of a mentality of protect the art from the artist, uh, with the artist being the corporations. Because typically, uh, the ones who actually worked on the project, not the ones who publish and own the project, the ones who work on the project don't want it deleted because it's their work, you know? In, in some cases, it was like their life's work. There's also sort of a trend as well for people doomsday prepping with information. One of the greatest achievements that we've made in the modern world is the internet. The ability to share the collected human knowledge over a completely free, almost, system. You know, like something that's integrated into everything. It's like, it's radio, but better. But collected human knowledge is everywhere. We can find it so easily. Now let's say a solar flare hits. Let's say an EMP goes off and it wipes out all of technology. Let's say something like that occurs. What happens to that information? I don't know. I don't know if it will be recoverable. I don't know if it will be gone forever. I don't know if we've lost all of it. Well, as a matter of fact, I do know that we haven't lost all of it because there are people all over the world saving this information and sort of future-proofing it. There's difficulties, but we'll get there. I want to take this time to kind of highlight some of the um, more significant organizations and individuals who are data hoarding for this reason. Uh, the number one, of course, being the Internet Archive. Internet Archive is massive. I mean, they're... There's a baffling amount of information that exists on the, in on the Internet Archive. It's a very, very noble thing they're doing. Noble, like they're fucking, like they're knights. The knights of the Internet Archive. Oi, are you a knight? <laughs> yeah, I'm a knight of the Internet Archive. What, what accent do we have? Where are we at? Uh, the Wayback Machine, also. That's a different kind of hoard, I think, but it is still a significant one because it allows us to see information that was deleted from the Internet. Same concept, but it too exists on the internet, I think. I didn't do a lot of research when going into this video. I just like talking about it. It's gas. I got burp. And then, of course, you know, the uh, the one we won't talk about, but the Yarhars out there. All of the Yarhars and all of the sites in which you do those things, every one of them have a trove. They have their booty. They have their loot. They got a lot of it, too. Hopefully it's safe. I don't know. But as far as individuals go, there's two that come to mind whenever it comes to data hoarding. The first being Marion Stokes. Marion Stokes was a, was a woman who recorded 35 years of television for 24 hours a day, every day. She did it from 1977? 1977 to 2012, if I'm not mistaken. When she got too old to do it herself, she hired somebody and trained them on how to do it. When she died and when her, her collection was donated um, to the Internet Archive, there were about roughly 300 terabytes of information that were, don that were donated. Um, but something very important to keep in mind whenever considering 300 terabytes of information is that they were stored on VHS tapes. 300 terabytes of information. 71 thousand VHS. That's, that's a lot, dude. That's so many. This woman had OCD or something of that nature. There was mental illness there, I'm sure. Uh, secondly is a user by the name of Dash Archivist on Reddit. They were active on the Data Horde, uh, subreddit for a long time. I think they probably still lurk and post occasionally. I know for a fact that the working minimum of spinning active data that they have is 2.6 petabytes of info. 2.6 petabytes of data. I'm gonna flip-flop between data and data throughout this video. I do apologize. Don't know why I do it. But that's a bananas amount of information. And that's not counting the 400 terabytes that they claim to also have in cold storage. Number three, for the reasons for the data hoard. Uh, people like sharing. People like having collections and being able to share them. People are collaborative. Humanity loves free collaboration. We love to be able to show somebody something we like, and all of the things we like being in one place in our own little private hoard 
Well, that's just neat. That's just cool. I can dig that. Corporations, though, they don't like free collaboration. They don't want free collaboration. Capitalism does not support free collaboration. It supports collaboration for a price. And temporary collaboration. Collaboration! These are people that will, generally speaking, try to give back to the community in some way, or give back to the general public. They will upload parts of their own horde, when most people probably don't do that. To further go into that, though, people love collecting things. Having a collection is something that almost every human being has had. A collection of what? Well, in this case, it's a collection of data, but it may have been baseball cards, may have been Yu-Gi-Oh cards, may have been Pokemon cards. We like cards here. May have been action figures. It could have been Funko Pops. It could have been those little, like, figures that, like, old people had before Funko Pops. They're, like, ceramic and, like, little weird cherub baby things. Or, like, a weird bathroom frog. Every human being has had some kind of a collection, and if you claim to not have, you're lying. Thing is, collecting things can be expensive. Collecting things can be very expensive. But depending on what you data hoard, and depending on what you need for your everyday life, such as, like, your phone, flash drives, uh, a computer, it can be really, really cheap to begin your data hoard. Of course, eventually, you're gonna have to expand your storage and go further beyond that. As we progress further into the information age, it becomes way, way easier to afford storage. When I bought my first flash drive in 2006, I bought a 1 gigabyte flash drive because it was required for a project. That was $60. Now I can buy a 64 gigabyte flash drive for about 20. Give it another five years, I'll be able to buy a 128 gigabyte flash drive for like 10 bucks. I'll be able to go to Dollar Tree and get at least an eight gig. So to be able to have all of these things, to be able to gain all of these things and to keep them and they're yours and it's your private collection nobody has the same collection as you unless they just have everything like mr archivist did that's uh, that's fun i mean i get it i understand it it's the crow brain mentality it's the ooh, i want shiny things to bring over to my other shiny things so i have more shiny things finally though there's probably the reason that i feel is the most significant so you'll hear terms floating around within the data hoarding community, such as hot storage and cold storage. Cold storage has been used traditionally for a very, very long time to refer to like, like a walk-in freezer or like a cold room. It is literally kept cold. And what that means for electronics and what that means for data storage is that they are not being used currently. If something is not being used, generally it has a shelf life of about five years whenever it comes to hard drives or flash drives or something of that nature. Hot storage, on the other hand, has, it's much weirder. It just depends on the hard drive. And hard drives are still, ow, I bit my lip. Hard drives are still more popular than like solid state drives. Where a hard drive may break, it may break down, it may stop working or stop being as good. You can typically recover the data off of it if it does fail. If a solid state drive fails, which doesn't happen as often, they are more long-lasting, but if a solid-state drive fails, it's gone. You're not recovering it. It's done. It's donezo. In general, long-term storage presents a bit of a difficulty whenever it comes to data hoarding. Even something like an SD card in cold storage has a maximum shelf life of about 10 years. Expected, of course. There may be exceptions. And truly, the most permanent solution we have are these 100 gigabyte double-sided blu-ray discs that are called m discs these discs are designed uh, discs these discs are meant to last for 1000 years now that's a long time that is a very long time for a disc to last for a 100 gigabyte disc and that's a lot of information there's still a a, a limit, you know? And this is still untested. We have no way to know if they will actually last a thousand years. The only thing we know as a species will last for 1,000 years in the right conditions, which is an important caveat for all of this, by the way. But the only thing that we know of is rock. Stone. A chisel and a hammer is the longest lasting way that we have to preserve information even now. And the thing is, is I don't think anybody's gonna be chiseling the entire script for How I Met Your Mother's pilot episode anytime soon. I don't think anybody cares quite that much. But what does data hoarding really mean for us as a people, as a society, as even just a community of data hoarders? 
Well, it could mean a lot of things. It's still a pretty new and developing thing, officially. Scientifically being termed in 2015, that's only nine years ago. Wow, 2015 was nine years ago. The focus on data conservation and the focus on preserving all of this may actually end up leading to better long-term storage options, other than just disks and other than it being capped at 100 gigabytes. I want a disk that can hold 8,000 gigabytes before I'm dead. That's my go That's what I want to see out of life. But realistically, the average data hoarder probably isn't doing it for conservation. The average data hoarder is your mother. And I don't just mean that because it's got whore in the name. No, I mean, tell her to close all of her tabs on Google Chrome. I promise you, she hasn't done it in two years. Thank you guys so much for watching my video. I appreciate it so much. Like... I can't believe I'm already at over 800. Um, my goal at the beginning of the year was to hit 1,000 by the end of the year. And even if I don't do that well, it really looks like I'm going to get there well before the end of the year. And if I do, that's going to be awesome. That's going to blow my fucking mind, dude. I gotta cuss less. I gotta I gotta use less explicatives. Ex ex expletives. Expletives. That's the one. I gotta use less expletives in my day-to-day -day speech. I get in trouble for it at work, too. Anyway, subscribe to the channel. You know, hang out. Do, do whatever. Leave a comment. I had to try very hard to talk about certain things in this particular video without actually mentioning communities or things by name. But we all know who I'm talking about. If you don't, I'll, I'll, I'll communicate it in some other way. Y'all have a great rest of your night.